yes. That's my granddaughters. Yeah. They get zoomies about this time. Well, at, at his age, we estimate him eight or nine years old. He's not a young cat, and we've had him for a few years. And at his age, he's never played a lot since we've had him. But when he gets into a mood to play, good Lord, it's like he's been on steroids. <laughs> it's like somebody shoved up energizer battery up his butt. <clears throat> he flips around, jumps, hangs off of things. And mind you, we're only in a 26-foot camper. So <laughs> it's comical. Because there ain't much room in here for him to bounce off of things. <laughs> oh, before I forget, guys, um, I'm uploading something to this to Discord. Okay. Are you putting it in the other videos of interest? No, I I just put it in the Wolf uh, Sanctuary. Okay. If we have, it's to... something that got started today that. Jade has been begging and begging and begging me for Aww. to get done. Okay. It's not finished yet. But he asked for your help. <sighs> My aunt's doing it for free. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. We still got to do like, we still got to fill in the light blue and do a few touch ups. But yeah, let me get over to the sanctuary. I added two. I need to move it. I didn't know where to put it. That's cute. Mommy's little bear. <laughs> gummy bear. Yep, Mama's little gummy bear. And, yeah, you got... Because the first ultrasound picture I have of her ever, she looked like a little gummy bear. I love it. Okay. I'm trying to read here. Oh, my gosh. That's good. So we're praying for Mark Herman, Nani. No, sir. Um, Texas... Um, Highway Patrol Trooper Kevin Vasquez. Oh, Vasquez. Kevin Ramirez Vasquez. He was struck by a vehicle while investigating a crash. He is still with us. Yeah, he's in current critical condition. Yes. Trooper. I'm going to put it as Trooper Vasquez. Yeah. Mark is my constable. Okay, got you. He takes so good. He takes such good care of us. Hey, chap. Yes, ma'am. Can we add my foster mom to the prayer list? Yep. Give me a second. Let me get this one in here. Uh, that's why we're here. That's why I'm checking before we get started on our list. Critical condition. Uh, struck. Struck by vehicle. My foster mom hasn't. Uh... As quite a few of you know, been the greatest human being, and Tessa turned seven on Wednesday, and so far it doesn't even look like I'm even going to get to tell her happy birthday, or give her, even give her her birthday present. Pray for a heart softening, it sounds like, right? Yeah. Thank you, dear. All right, no problem. That's what we're going to mark on here, okay? Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, we got to also remind ourselves every day when we're doing our prayers and our devotionals to always pray for Israel. I want a little extra prayers for Vaughn. He kind of needs it right now. I'll be, I'll add a star to it. <laughs> Is he trying to get sober? I mean, according to him, he's been sober this entire time, but uh, he's trying to cause other issues and make things worse and keep Jade from me, and yeah. I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. So we'll be, we'll be just, you know, and that's clearly praying for our enemies, Kaylin, and that's what we got to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's gotten bad enough, guys, that... The last few times that Jade and I have done a video call, she tells me that all her daddy does when he's home is ignore her and plays on his game system. Like, he's legit trying to buy her love. And they do. If, if they can get away with that, they will. 
She keeps asking me when she gets to come back to my house. And that's sad. And all I can keep telling her is, you know, baby, that's up to daddy. That's unfortunately that's not up to mommy. If it was up to mommy, you'd already be here. Yep. You just gotta keep it civil though. Okay? As I'm holding back the tears. I know. There's a lot that you come through already, Kaylin. And it's good the evidence is in your life. Back to school, right? Yeah, and I'm a, at a job interview yesterday at an assisted living place. And I may even be going for my CNA license on top of everything. Praise Love God. It. Love it. Okay, praise God. Yeah, that's good. Your head's on the right path. That's really good. Mm -hmm. and, and our brother mm -hmm. Chris just popped back in. So praise God for Chris coming in. <laughs> Hi, I seen you, brother. I see you. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. <laughs> oh, it is so good to see each and every one of you. Oh, it is. Now, um, guys, well, when, I'm glad that we're touching bases because so much goes on in our lives. And we definitely want to make sure that we have everybody on our list that needs to be on our list. And everything. So uh -huh. let's, let's go ahead and go through our list to make sure we all have the same notes. So we're still praying for Leroy and Dutch Biker. Mm -hmm. We're still praying for all of Kaylin's children. I'm not going to miss one of them by saying them by name because I can never remember them all. I got too many children's head names in my head. <laughs> Just to be honest with you. Uh, we're still praying for Sierra. Uh, we're definitely praying for Sierra. We're praying for Connie and Shyla. We can, we're not going to stop praying for them. Uh, Vaughn and Sawyer, that God does change their life and turns their heart around. Um, salvation and as well. Fearless Patriot Sister Maria, we're praying for. Allison, we're praying for 30 days of sobriety or plus. Simone, who lost her dad, we're praying for. Uh, Sister Grace and Gina, health issues after losing mom and dad almost two years ago. They're still fighting, guys. Little Evelyn, we're still praying for, and her family. Eric has his moments where he talks a lot about Evelyn. And it makes sense of why she talk. he talks a lot about Evelyn and her older sister that's both autistic. Evelyn has CHD on top of that. And so it's extra risk for Evelyn. So we want to keep her in prayer. Uh... Nani's Grandpa Trujillo to soften his heart and to love Mama Trujillo who's going through decline in life. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm not going to forget that one, Nani. That one catches my eye every time I look at my page. Grandpa Leon, praying that he did get to see his first great grandbaby before he passes. Yeah. Keep that in there. Don Kennedy, the panther, as Matt calls her. And <laughs> Bill, whether he wants it or not, or likes it, we're going to pray for them. Yep. Both daughter Lindsay's. <clears throat> still praying for. Thank we're you. For Rory, which I know she's been really he, sick. He's doing better at the moment. Praise God, but we're praying for her. Thank you. We have not forgot to pray for little Roro. Roro. <laughs> <laughs> or Benny, for that matter. Or any of your little angel baby. Well, Benny actually got... Um, Sick, had to come home from school Thursday. See, I had a feeling something about Benny was wrong. Bless their hearts. They are not getting a break. No, they're not. Well, that's okay. They're getting stronger. And they're getting prayed over. Yep. But something said to mention little Benny, Nani. Hmm? <laughs> now the girls, they're all doing fine. There's, they're, the other girls are tough as nails. They are. But little Roro and little Benny are getting the butts kicked. It's a sign they need to move from back to Texas. They definitely need to move back to Texas. <laughs> Thank you, Nani. <laughs> Thank you. You know that's right. Look at Evelyn. Yep. She got me. Look at her. She's thriving. Yes. Uh, Poppy, she's healing. She's at home. Little Poppy's at home. So she's thriving now after being in Texas Children's. That place is a miracle. God is in that place. That's why it's a miracle. 
He is. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a good flag. Yeah. If God wasn't there, these children would not be getting healed right now. The same with Indy Anderson. Yep. Our surgeon had prayer with us before my husband went into surgery. We had prayer every single doctor's visit. Let's see, that's what you know. It's a yeah. And there are people, the ladies downstairs on the monitors monitoring all of the heartbeats and whatnot. They pray over each and every patient they're monitoring. See, see, I told you God's in that place. Oh, yeah. that's good. But that 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 tells me that that's why the children are getting better there. Mm -hmm. It's because they are letting God lead their their surgeries and their procedures, not their hearts. They're not letting their minds that can be flawed and are intimidated and influenced lead them. They're letting God lead them, and mm. that's what's so good about it. I got sidetracked here, but that's so true. Indy Anderson and Texas Children's. We're going to add that to our prayer list, Nani. <laughs> now you added something. Now you got Brother George flipping pages again. <laughs> uh, come on, paper, separate. There we go. The Lord continues to bless them in the work that they're doing because they do amazing things through the Lord. Indy Anderson, I N D I E. M D, capital E and capital D. Oh, at capital M, as in capital, Mary. Yep, capital D is in David. David. And then and then Anderson. MD Anderson. Thank you. I thought you said Indy. <laughs> so MD Anderson Hospital. They're one of the highest rate cancer hospitals in the world. And Texas Children's. Yes. And they're right next door to each other. Amen. But see, I wanted to make sure I get them on here, Nani. <laughs> because they are working just as well as the ICUs and the um, labor and delivery unit. Yes. So there we go. I got them marked. Now they're on my newest page. <laughs> so we added an extra page to our Bible, our prayer list, guys. Page nine. Yep, we're on page nine, Nani. <laughs> <laughs> page nine and counting. It, yeah. Man, it ain't stopping. But look at how many prayers have been answered on those nine pages that we're still praying for. Yeah, we're still praying for the people. Yes. Don't forget. There's over 20. Guys, there's yeah. over 20. In nine pages, over 20 people we're still praying for that are healed. Yep. Thank you, Nani, for reminding us. Ooh. God is good. All the time. All the time? God is good. Amen. Uh, where were we at here? Both daughter Lindsay's. I, that's where I was at. I couldn't remember. Both daughter Lindsay's and the families. We can't yes. get the families. Uh, well, their, their postpartum depression is, all three of them, it's improving. Praise God. Heather. They do a daily chat with each other. One's in Chile, one's in Morgantown, one's in Austin. But they still have their little group prayer time every night together. See, see, when I say my brother's and sister's keeper. Yep. And they're all doing much, much better and thriving, happy babies. Mm -hmm. And think about that, Nani, because what is Discord? It's our way to connect when there's problems. Exactly. What is Twitter? A way for us to connect when there's an issue. We, we are real time connected. Yes. And then a lot of y'all have my phone number. Well, you know, I text you with anything. Yeah, if there's ever a life event and you need me right then and there to pray, if it's possible, I'm going to stop. As long as I'm not in the middle of a traffic closure, I'm right. a, I'm going to respond immediately. If not, I'm going to immediately pray while working, and then I will message you. I will respond back soon, or mm -hmm. I will get back to you. I'm in the middle. I'm working. But I'm going to try to give you some kind of acknowledgement that, hey, yeah. I'm praying. And I know Nani has sent me something while I was in the middle of a traffic issue. And <laughs> I'm praying. <laughs> All she got was I'm praying. Yep. My response, two words. But I knew you were praying and I, you know. And that's, that's why, and that's why I've been, if you guys have been on Twitter, you will see it where I said, who wouldn't want an office with this view? 
<laughs> and it's a and I'll I'll share them with you guys uh, on Discord too as well in artwork. I'm literally standing there and looking at the two mountains coming together, and just the way the sun was coming up behind the clouds that were going through there. Perfect view, beautiful view of the of the darkened face of the mountain with the with the clouds being lit up. It was just God's artwork. Yes. And so a lot of times that's my office view. And a lot of people go, well, don't you stand on freeways and, and highways too? And I said, yeah. But a lot of the jobs that I'm doing right now are canyon work. And they're down in these canyons where you can't get a phone call or a signal. And so you get these beautiful, beautiful views. And you can't ask for something more. Like the John Deere with the deer. That was comical. Yeah, that it's was a good. Deer right below the actual deer. <laughs> I never thought about that until I started looking back at the picture. And I went, okay, God, you got a great sense of humor. <laughs> what? <For that. laughs> but so, yeah, we got to remember our, our people in these prayers, guys. Yes. And we got to thank God when, when they are delivered. <clears throat> CC CC's boss's mother for healing. That I know she's healed, but I don't know any new condition on that. I don't either. Yeah, Lisa's Max cousin uh rung the bell. She's she's one that God answered the prayer. Yep. And we know that, Mac. I know. We know that God had his hand in that because she didn't start clearing up until we started praying for her. That's right. If you remember right, Max, she was fighting pretty hard when you talked about it to me. Yes, sir. And they were they weren't sure it was gonna clear up. And then after we put you on the prayer, and I'm not boasting that it's me personally, but it's the spirit in us praying to God fervently. In uh, it's the it's the spirit and the and the group in general. Yeah. We are just anointed by God to make petitions. Yep. Heard. I'm the best one. Yep, we're willing vessels. Thank you, Mac. You took my words. <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen Lisa restored. <clears throat> and that's why I keep her on here. I keep yeah. her on here because I know that God still has his hand in her life. And God's still working through her life to deliver her from the pestilences. <clears throat> Look at little Frank. Mac, you remember Frank, how bad and angry he was back six yeah. months ago, little Frank was? Right. I mean, it's been eight plus months that he's accepted Christ. Almost a year. And I got thinking about Brother Frank. He's been real busy, so he hasn't been able to attend the Bible study. But what he does is while he's driving, he puts the video on and puts it in his car speakers. And listens to it on his commutes. Living in L.A., you do 11 miles before you even get off an exit sometimes. Yep. Just to go to Walmart from your house. I bet that's like that down in Dallas and Houston area, too. Totally. So you you get time to listen because you're in traffic. And so that's what he does. And we were talking just the other day about that. And so, because I can remember when little Frank was so angry, so rebellious, and so argumentative. And, and I want to testify because the goodness of God was I said, do you want to go through somebody else to know Jesus or do you want to know Jesus for yourself? That was the question I asked him. Do you want to de depend on a man that cannot absolve you of sin? Tell you you're forgiven? Or do you want to hear it straight from God's mouth? That was when he was yelling at me. And I mean, that man was yelling that I didn't understand him and because he grew up in this kind of religion for so many years. And that's when I asked him that question, and it froze him. That question didn't come from me. It came from the Word of God. And what would you rather have, the well of living water or the well of eternal damnation? That's what I asked him, and it shut him down in his yelling. And he goes, I would rather have the well of living water. I said, then wouldn't you want to go to the source? And he goes, yeah. I said, do you think beads are going to truly save you? Do you think a, a woman that was 
just as we are flesh and covered in sin, to try to petition to, or a dead man that was a saint. Yes, he was a saint, but he's dead. He can't help you no more. Or do you want to pray to the source that's alive? And that's what got him to accept Christ. And so I'm grateful that God used me as a willing vessel, as Max said. But I watched Frank start to share more and more about Jesus compared to the anger that he used to share. And Mac can attest to that, can't you, Mac? Sir? You could attest to how much Frank has changed. Oh, yes, sir. Most definitely. You see a piece about him. Uh, 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 yeah, it, a big piece. It, it is... Uh, it, it has come over him uh, a lot here in the last few months alone. He's sharing more and more scripture, asking more and more questions. <clears throat> he, the, the, the Holy Spirit is working in Brother Frank. Oh, yeah. That, that we, is a fact. That's him in our studies, but he's listening to our studies. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I want you guys to know that even though he's absent physically, he's here spiritually. Every time. Candace and Saya, we're still praying for them. I know they're better, but I'm still praying for them. <clears throat> Benita's family, she's going through a lot of trials right now because of her faith. It's contrary to the family's religion. Um, I'm not going to get into full details, but it's really a battle inside her home. So, But we want to pray for her. Alex, Alex uh, battling cancer. Max's buddy son, Noah battling cancer working but still battling it terry who had the afib and the mild stroke is still healed but they're but he's on medication and he's home but we want to pray for that we're still praying for mary beth r we're praying for Cracka's wife kimmy and Cracka, because he had an episode this last week where she went and totally ate crap on him mm -hmm. and he didn't know what to do and all he could do was cry and scream out and then he got attacked for crying and screaming out for help on Twitter. Yeah. That's <laughs> nuts. I went off on the people that were doing it. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I'm going to defend a person that's suffering and struggling and reaching out, especially a veteran. Yeah. <clears throat> and these, these other so-called veterans were attacking him and telling him to seek help, professional help. That is the worst thing you could tell somebody uh, when they're going to you're right you need spiritual guidance not not freudian guidance thank you chris you remember that i do also nice i do and i know it made a difference by the end of the night you know things had changed and you could see so it. it's it's nice to see the power of prayer yeah and, and you know, just because there was a Bildad in the audience, oh, it was nice. I forgot I put that on there. <laughs> it was nice to see a lot of um, bright, shiny souls reaching out, come to come in and let them know, "Hey, we're here," yeah. and don't worry about what what this egghead had to say. Yeah, it was just funny, Chris, because I forgot I even wrote Bildad there. I, it come to me as why are you being a bill dad <laughs> it did and i couldn't believe i said it but... well it's kind of fresh in our memory yeah <laughs> so far bill dad and elephant mm -hmm. i was glad to see you did it because sometimes you know you never know who reads it and people you know get a question and google it and all of a sudden it's like hey you never know what kind of spark that could start. Yeah. So I'm glad you did it. Uh, you know, I just when I when I pulled open my phone and I finally got a signal and that's what showed up was him being attacked. I was like, no, 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 no. We ain't having this. And you know how I, the old Southern mamas would do that whole snap thing. That's what I was thinking when I did that. When I read that, <laughs> seeing a woman there with a rolling pin and snapping her fingers. And getting ready to duck a frying pan. Because that was the attitude I had to defend him. 
was like, we aren't going to have this. So I'm not going to let somebody be destroyed while they're already being destroyed. <clears throat> well, I think that's part of being watchful. Yeah, it really is, Chris. Thank you. Mm. But yeah, definitely keep Cracker and Dusty in prayer, guys, and his wife Kimmy and the family, because uh, that that's just been total hell right now, and it plays on you with all the medical illnesses. You're not going to have your wits about you. You're going to get angry easy and lose your crap. Yep. And there's and that's just being the God's honest truth. So. I just I want to say that to you guys. And well, like, that's horrible. He's having to watch the love of his life perish before his eyes. She's having to face death and knowing she's leaving behind a child and their dreams as a couple. Yeah. And her dreams as a woman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're both on opposite sides of the fence at the moment, facing two completely separate realities. One with and so with, with responsibility and one without it, and it's bad. it's killing them. Oh, it is. It is. And it, see, and a lot of people go seek professional help, like you said, Freudian help, or you seek godly help, and you know there's a lot of spiritual people somewhere. Where are you going to go first? Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to the right place. He's going to. The I think he he dug in and made that pretty clear. <laughs> was, he's perfectly fine. Yeah, I love, taking I the love advice that. from the people he trusts. Yeah, yeah, he's he's real, and that's you know something we take for granted um, because we do uh, have a lot of people that are motivated for clicks. And you, we all become, at least me, I, I can't say all of us, um, but I become desensitized towards things. Yeah, but for some reason, God won't let me become desensitized. Either. Not him. God pulls me. No, down. he stands out like a billboard. <laughs> I'm crying for He's help. like a billboard for, yeah, he's real is what I'm saying. There's, there's an individual stroke to, so, you know, he's genuine. Yeah, just like you, just like Mac, just, just like, like Sister Terry, just like Sarah. I mean, I, I mean, you, you see the realness of people come through. You feel and it, Chris. Terry and I follow some of the same people, and I get a kick out of her comments, and I just, you know, I love seeing my people there. Amen. Yeah, you, know, you know, and that's that united by spirit, Chris. We're not united by flesh, but by spirit. And that's, that's a lot to do with it, knowing the spirit by the spirit. And we're seeing it. Yeah. And, and this is why I'm grateful for our church family, our fellowship family. I really am because we, we are united on a front. And we're facing battles in a technology world for the kingdom. We really are. And people are like, God. We oh, really are. And I laugh because these clowns, and I'm going to call them clowns. There's no other word for it, but clowns. That's nice enough. Thank God is in an electronic media and in tech age. God was on the tech age before it became the tech age. And so, where what, do you think it came from? Yeah, God gave us the intelligence <laughs> to create it. Satan's trying to use it to destroy God's creation, just like he's done man and flesh. Sure. And sure. It, it, but a lot of people go, well, you know, Satanists created the web. No, they didn't. God mm -hmm. created. And we got to get away. It's my, I don't know if this is scriptural. So please, I'm going to throw this out to the group. But it was my understanding. I don't know where I caught this. So sometimes we catch incorrect information. It might be time to do a little housekeeping on it. But it was my impression Satan did not have the ability to create. He doesn't. Demons are so, created. Demons are procreated by men taking wives or angels, yeah. or angels taking wives of mankind. So, so I I get that they you know 
Satan can impress people. We saw that in Job, right? You know, good, righteous men acting like complete morons, for lack of words. But yeah, that works. Um, I I would use someone that wants to use a laboratory for malevolent intent. Something's motivating that person. It's not God. Yeah. It's, it, but that's what I'm saying is the Satan has to counterfeit. Right. But he cannot right. he cannot create himself. Mm-hmm. He's never he's never had a child. However, his demons, which are fallen angels, have. They have the ability to procreate. <clears throat> yes. And so a lot of people are like, well, I thought angels were, fallen angels were asexual. No, they have, they are male. And a lot of people don't catch that. Because they took to their wives, took to them wives of mankind. Yeah, Genesis didn't drill down into it, but it's certainly, it's clear. Yeah, it's very good happen. So that's why a lot of things that I watch and a lot of things I stopped watching was because of that false ideologies <clears throat> became prevalent in it. <clears throat> so, but yeah, you are correct on that. And biblically, you are correct as well, Chris, on your. Assignment. Okay. So that I can, I can, I can tell you, you were biblically correct. Well, thanks for the housekeeping moment there. Um, no, it's good to clarify things. If you're not sure, let's clarify. And so, and that's my understanding. And from the biblical, Satan never procreated. He never could. He hadn't had the ability. God had completely punished him. And that means God really punished him. <laughs> right. And, and that's why I kind of laugh as everyone's like, well, Satan was a fallen angel. He had the ability to procreate. No, he didn't. Never once does it tell you in the word of God that Satan had offspring. It does tell you the fallen angels had offspring. So by that mention and by that non-mention, one can know that Satan never had a child. But his fallen angels, his minions, his demons did. Just so people understand that. Because if Satan had children, God would have mentioned that. Don't you think? Hmm. Food for thought. Thanks, Chris, for the housekeeping. Yeah. That's why I love our studies, because we, we stop for a minute to clarify things. We don't we don't allow it to, con- to stew. Uh, like I said, let's get back where we were. I'm trying to remember where we were, where it had an Antonio who did get saved but lost his nana. We are praying that he continues in his walk in salvation. Mario for salvation is Nani requested. We're still praying for Mario Nani. <clears throat> little Abby Terry's, uh, or not little Abby, but our little Abby, which is our 16-year-old. Pray for her all the time and her mama. Uh, all of Terry's fur babies we're praying for. Yeah. Um, I had to get my mind back on Thank that. you. <laughs> I'm just trying to find my place here. Uh, Jasmine, that's Jimmy's daughter, praying that she gets saved. Stephen, Nicole, Ashley, Armando, for salvation. Philip's daughter, Isabella, who is in the cult of sophistry, pray that she gets pulled out of that. Carol's Evan's daughter, Karen, and her daughter, Katerina. Did I say it right, Terry? Yes. Yes, you did. Got it right. Cat. You can just call her Cat. Cat. Yeah. I'm um, praying for that. LD and Little Rylan were praying for, for salvation as well. I want While I got them in my head, I yeah. want to mention them. Isaac's unspoken request is staying in here. I'm not giving up on your unspoken, Isaac. Won't ever stop on them. Riley for cancer. She's still in the care facility. It is breaking Ken's heart. But keep her in prayer. Matthew, who's still in a care facility. Amanda, his wife, is still taking care of the bills. Praying for them, guys. Uh, Tam, 
who was hospitalized. As far as I know, she's home. But keep her in prayer. Vincente for salvation. Mama Bear's battles. Mike Harris's battles. Mark, Donnie, and Lori for cancer. David. Hey, I got an update with Mark. Um, he just had his one-year cancer screening. I think it was last week or the week before. Yep. He's still cancer-free. There's our answer, Nani. Yep. And <laughs> there we go. Another thing to add to his part of the prayer list is he just was forced to quit his job up in the city due to health reasons. Labor work. Oh, got you, brother. Got you, sister. Mm-hmm. So we're going to pray for that. Uh, but that's it. Cancer free. Praise God. See, there's yeah. that answer. There's that answer I was talking about. That's another one. Ooh, God is so good. Alan, who lost his wife, Linda, we're praying for. Uh, Peggy and Billy for colon cancer. We're praying for Max, landlord's dad, Jason, working like a trooper while battling colon cancer. And, uh, I, you know, his son is my current landlord and also a good friend of mine. Uh, they did some tests on, on Jason. And the spots in the lung showed that there was some cancer to spread. Well, we're praying for it, Mac. We're praying. And he he's never smoked. That's the thing about it. You don't have to smoke to get lung cancer. Nope. And I'm sorry, but that's that's a common misconception. Oh, I'm just yeah. putting that out. I'm, just, I'm just putting that out there in case oh, anybody. Yeah. But I wanted to make that clear too, Mac. Yeah, you don't have to be a smoker to get lung cancer. Right. There's plenty of other chemicals causing lung cancer that we ingest every day. And that's usually what leads to cancer of the lung. <clears throat> but that's sad. But we will keep them in prayer for that, Mac. Thank you. That's not going to stop. Joe Dunn and his wife we're praying for. J.C., Sister Katie and his mom Mary and JC because of losing Lauren. JC, I know you're going through a lot, brother, but I'm telling you, God is still there beside you. He hasn't sure. left your side. He hasn't left your sister Katie or your mom Mary's side either. I just want you to know that. God put it on my heart to think about that just now. To tell you. I know you're trying to work hard to take your mind off it, but God told me to tell you. So I wanted you to know that he's been by your side the whole time, brother. Kimmy and Jacob and the whole Wynn family. That's Tabby. That's Tim's sister, Tabby's family. With Kimmy being battling blindness, Jacob healing back there in Nevada after being ran over by a car. And it's just been a real tough year for their family. Losing Tim, losing Carol. It's been heavy on their minds and other things. Yes. Pat, Patty's ex, Bill Haas, we're praying for because of life issues there. Jeremy, who lost his wife, Rebecca, a year ago. He's still battling. Lisa, and, like I said, I did mention Lisa and Gina already. Uh, sister Grace. Mm. I'm just making sure I didn't miss anyone. Mama Bear. I did miss Mama Bear on the first page. We're praying for her. Mm. I'm just making sure. So we got them. Yvette, son, Elijah. We're still praying for medical reasons and salvation. See, I told you I'd miss somebody. I just spotted it tonight. Mm. Diego Ranch, Mike is his name. Pray for him. He's going. He's undergoing a lot of attacks. People are yelling, well, you don't have enough black people in your program. You don't have enough of this color or that. And that's happened today, and it just guts me. Because Diego Ranch is equine therapy. Equine therapy helped me when I was a kid and helped me walk today. 
So you can't tell me that his program doesn't work. It does. And so that's why that's kind of near and dear to me. Is knowing how God uses those animals to heal. Get people to talk that have never talked before. Get them to function. Because they're differently abled. And to be productive in society. When everybody wants to hide them, in a, hide them away. To be just in the corner, ignored. That program draws them out into the public view. Brings awareness to how much potential they truly have. Just remember that, guys. Because he's got these wagons, and unfortunately one got stolen, but God restored two for the one that got stolen. Just remember that. He had to rebuild one. And the one he rebuilt put lights on it, the whole nine yards. It looked amazing. But that's why I mention Diego Ranch a lot on Twitter. And I respond constantly with him. So keep that in prayer. Our landlord uh, was really severely sick overnight. She got really sick. And I want you guys to pray for her. Her name's April. So keep her in your prayer, guys. Because yeah. she, she's, she's even helping me get my car fixed right now. Even though she don't like it that I'm using her car to, put, to go to work, she's still helping me. I mean, I'll be paying it back, but pray for her because she didn't have to do it. She could have said, you're on your own. Figure it out. But instead, she said, I'll help you. She's, she's been helping us all along. She frustrates us, but she does help us. So it's an ongoing, but I'm grateful for it. I guess I wanted to mention that. So yeah, our Vietnam vet, Steve, who's constantly having to go back and forth to um, VA, we're praying for them. Rocky Mountain Mama and her husband, who's going through the decline of life. I haven't spoke to our sister, Rocky Mountain Mama, in a couple weeks, but we want to keep him in prayer. <clears throat> I'm just making sure I didn't miss anybody on my page before I flip it, Nani. My poor prayer book. <laughs> Easy Smith, guys. We're praying for her. She has health issues. So we want to pray for her. I knew there was somebody I was missing. Hmm. NSD and APA, we're still praying for them. We haven't forgot praying for them. Riley and Betty Jo, we're still praying for Kaylin. I want you to know yeah. that. <clears throat> Straightforward's grandmother, we're still praying for. Pandora, who has medical issues, we're praying for. <clears throat> Cowboy, we're still praying for with the diabetes and his mom. <clears throat> now, Isaac did mention he has a new neighbor, so I want to mention that real quick before I forget it. Her name is Carol, I believe. Yes, Isaac's new neighbor's name is Carol. So let's pray for Carol as well. Um, that was where Malcolm had passed away, which we're praying for Malcolm's family anyways. But we're also praying for Isaac's new neighbor. <clears throat> I wanted to at least mention that. Uh, Matthew, who is two months clean and sober, we're praying for. It's been about six months now, so we're still praying that he stay clean and sober. Roland, who's battling leukemia, we're praying for. Riley Strain's family. Who, Riley Strain was found murdered. Praying for that family. Colleen's mother, terminal cervical cancer. We're praying for that. Professor Merriman's family, due to him having health issues. As Brother Chris says all the time, pray for our enemies and our politicians, guys. They didn't get in that office by choice. But God is using them politicians, no matter how wicked they are, to wake us up and to shake us to the core. Just so you know, but we still have to pray for them that God will still use them in a way to bring people back to him. Hobo Shoestrings family, Mac. We can't forget that. The young boy that survived the shooting in Oklahoma. 
only one out of his whole family. Pray that this doesn't permanently destroy the child. Old Graybeard, unspoken request. Uh, Sister Sarah having to travel back and forth with the grandbabies. We're praying for her all the time. So I just, I want to mention her right quick. And just so you guys know. Uh, Sister Amy, uh, always pray for Amy because she's going through a lot now that her dad just passed away. Uh, Heather's niece, Grace, we cannot forget them. So I wanted to make sure that we, we mentioned that. Uh, Brother James's hygienist mom, Zena, stage four colon cancer, we're still praying for. Roland Cerna, awareness against child trafficking. Uh, Galen, always strength in situation for you. I almost, Thank you. I almost forgot it, sister, but it's here. That's why I go by the pages to look. Terry, who's battling her legal troubles. We're still praying for that. Max Aunt Peggy, grand mal seizures, who's recovering still. Thank you. She's got a long road to hoe with a broken pelvis. <laughs> yep. And all the other minor injuries. Bev and Chris, we're still praying for. Matthew, who's losing vision and needing transplants. A restoration of health and faith. Prayers for the Yellville, Arkansas area that's still recovering from that flood earlier this year. Uh, Brandon's dad, that's Coindy's Coffee's dad. We want to pray for that. Sadly, Max buddy, Jose Riviera, did pass away. But let's pray for his family. Um, did Mac did update us last Wednesday, so I wanted to at least put that on there. Astra Sullivan, that's the 10-year-old boy that died after being trapped in the storm drain last year. We're still praying for his family. Because no, no parent wants to bury their child. I'm sorry, it's not normal. <clears throat> I, I, it, it, it sucks. There's no other word for it. I've buried a child, I know. I got another one that we need to add on there, chap. Okay. Because where does this one sound? Give me a second. Grandma Wolf. We're going to pray for Grandma Wolf. Because this past week I've been talking to a wrongful death attorney. And we're officially getting the ball rolling, guys. So pray for a wrongful death suit for Grandma. God guides that yeah, like there's definitely a case. Oh, I know there is, sister. After after you not just against both of her caretakers, but against her CIL too. Yeah, it's not weird to ask for that. There's nothing weird about that, but knowing that somebody could have prevented her death and didn't, yeah, that's wrongful. Right is right. Yeah. Right is right, Kaylin. Little Lottaloo, we cannot forget her. Eric's son, Jaden, stage four leukemia and needing a bone marrow transplant. I haven't got an update. Ethan Fussell's family. Um, he The guy admitted to murdering him, but won't tell the police where his body is. So pray for his family. Pray for Weber's family. We got to remember that. Uh, we're praying for Carissa over on Discord. She's raising a lot of teenagers right now. So that's a battle for any parent. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I've raised teenagers. I know. Pam, who lost her husband, we're still praying. Yeah. <clears throat> Ryan, uh, Dark Prince Frost, who lost his dad on Father's Day, we're still praying for. Uh, there it is. Uh, prayer for the Long family. Can't forget the Long family. The Cooks, the Longs. Just so you know. Mac, I remembered both of them somehow. <clears throat> uh, like I said, Nani's daughter is a level one trauma center, NICU labor and delivery mom and nurse. <laughs> we want to pray for the moms, the dads, and the nurses in that NICU center. But pray for Texas General Children's completely and ND Anderson. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think we need to expand that prayer to the whole hospital. Because there's a lot of battles in that hospital that are fought every minute for these babies and these people that are going in there. Cancer treatments, you name it. 
<clears throat> emergency surgeries. Pray for these doctors, guys. Because I guarantee it's taking a piece of their, their heart every time somebody loses their battle. Whether win or loss, their piece of them is involved at all times. Like I said, we're going to stay praying for Texas, Nani. Thank you. Especially for Roro and Benny. <laughs> <clears throat> them two have been through the worst of the worst. Prayer for the granddad and the Simpson family. Can't forget that. Mm. <clears throat> Nani, for your health issues, every time they change the air around you. Poor girl, you get... That and no ladder. I completed my first test to see if I'm bleeding inside, and hopefully we can rule out colon cancer. Praise God. Praise God. And stay off them ladders, Nani. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to keep telling you to stay off them ladders. Thank you, whoever <laughs> reminded me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to say it. Uh, yeah, it was a little. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to say it, so thank you. Uh, Chris's buddy, Travis, who is a contractor, lost his home in a fire. I'm um, praying for him all the time. That God restored the devil's soul. A little update there. Um, Travis, I guess someone donated a fifth wheel camp trailer to him. Cool. That, that's and awesome. sounded like some local community aides come in their direction now. So just that's answer God. to prayer there. That's God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. I told you we're going to keep him in there, though, until he's fully restored, Chris. Oh. Matt's cousin Stacy, who got colon cancer, we're praying for. Her. Both of Sarah's unsaved sons and their families. Every time Sarah comes down there to take care of them grandbabies, she is always sowing the seed of God's word in their hearts. Yeah. If you don't think God's going to work on that family, grandma's already working for the glory of the kingdom. So pray that her message does not return void. Because God said his word will never return void. Just remember that. There will be a reason someone will get saved and it will change that family's dynamic. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. Marty, uh, Chris's buddy, walk in the Lord, get stronger and discernment in these trying times and salvation. Full set, fully salvation. Uh, families in Israel who are losing children right now during these wars. We cannot forget that. Um, we have to keep praying for Israel, guys. Uh, just me, Destiny Grace. I haven't seen her in a while, but as far as I know, she came through the heart valve surgery safe. But we're going to keep praying that she recovers and comes back. Uh, same with Chicago Cops daughter, Melissa. We haven't got an answer yet, but we're still praying. I know I mentioned Sierra earlier, uh, Little Wolf, but the, cyst, yeah. the cervical cancer and possible history. We're praying that God heals her. Uh, no, she ended up having the hysterectomy, and last I knew, she was still cancer-free. But see, I mean, I haven't talked to her in a while, or my foster mom about her in a while, but... But we need to pray for her. That it Yes, does. definitely. Because that's, that's her horrible. Southern Bell Patriot pneumonia. We're still praying for that pneumonia. As far as I know, she's healed. But we're still praying for her that she doesn't get it back. Like I said, Kaylin's family who lost their grandma. We're praying for that. Anita, possible cancer, we're praying for. Uh, grit and Grace, new chemo. I've seen her a couple times online and she's doing better. Sadly, the snake that I was talking about hadn't got an answer for him. But we're still praying that whatever it was, that God is in it. Uh, still praying for your divorce, Kaylin. Yeah, thank you. And strength right now. That's something I'm not going to forget. And you're requesting God leading people to our fellowship. That I'm definitely keeping in here. Uh, sadly, Brent, the cowboy that was in critical condition, did pass away. Pray for his wife and daughter um, right now because they're on their own. And that baby was only three years old. Oh. So I want you guys to remember Brent's family. Maria Betty, that's the one that lost Chris and the nurse because she was forced to take the vaccine and it killed her almost immediately. 
So that's another one that's buried a child before. They shouldn't have had to bury her child. Laura's mom, we're still praying for. Accidental overdose from prescription medication. She's home. But pray for her. Little Thorfinn, CHD baby. We're praying for him now. Gus's family, the Joubert's. Let's not forget Gus's family. Sadly, Gus succumbed to his health issues. And so Mark Joubert and his wife are battling a lot right now. I wanted to at least mention that. The hero of Ketchikan from the Griffin family. Keep them in prayer. Thank you. I can't forget that one, Nani. It's right there by the cross I drew. Doc's daughter, Theresa, who had blocked arteries. She didn't lose her hand, guys. She's home doing well. Uh, Raymond Recovery, we're still praying for. Her. And continued walk in the Lord. Carissa David, Dallas, Texas deputy that was shot and killed. We're praying for her. <clears throat> the Atlanta, Georgia school shooting and the other school shootings. Uh, praying for those families. Praying for the ho officer Hussein's family who he was brutally uh, ambushed. Thank you. We want to pray for that. Mary and Renee, unspoken. I did mention there, Amy Marie's dad. Yep, Roro. Max, other half, TC, that had the flu. She's doing better, ain't she, Mac? Yes, sir. Yeah, she's back to her old normal self. So, um, Sadly, Alexis Lorenz, the 23-year-old, suffering adverse reactions to oh. all the forced vaccines that it's apparently they have actually were trying to experiment on her, and that's why they forced her to take these vaccines, knowing she had an immune deficiency that caused the blood to clot in her body. And with the vaccines they gave her, it clotted up and it's really destroyed this beautiful 23-year-old. Uh, Jody, who is cancer-free, we're praying for. Greg's family, we're still praying for. Jimmy. Uh, Todd, Jimmy, Hill family, stepfather passing away. Um, that's the one he was talking to me about the other night. <clears throat> so Thank we're you. praying for that. Mrs. Piper, we're still praying for, who's battling a, a weird medical issue right now. Cancer Mom of the North going through the final chemo stages of this next round. We're praying for her. Uh, Trooper Kevin Vasquez, critical condition, struck by a vehicle. Like uh, Caitlin said, her foster mom, pray for the heart to be softened. Uh, pray for Vaughn's heart to be softened as well. Ooh, and my best friend Krista, she just found out she was pregnant the other day, and her every other her other four pregnancies that she's had have been extremely rough on her, and she almost didn't survive her last one. This was a very, very, very unexpected pregnancy. Yep, I've got her written down now, Krista, for pregnancy, troubled pregnancy. I got it. I got it. I caught that real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I wrote it as quick as you said it. Uh, hey, guys, somebody can keep up with me. <laughs> amazingly, I can't keep up with my wife or my landlord, but I can keep up with some people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but guys, do we have any others we need to pray for? Or Mac, did I miss any? <laughs> I think you got them all, chap. Plus some extras. <laughs> yeah. But guys, let's go ahead and bow our heads. <laughs> Heavenly Father, as we open your word tonight, Lord, we bring our petitions known first, Lord. But first and foremost, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those that trespass against us, O oh God. Lord, so many are our enemies. But your will be done in their life and bless them, O oh Lord. Bless those that despitefully use and curse us, O oh God. Teach us to love and forgive them. Lord, we know this doesn't mean to allow them to abuse us. We know that we are to shake the dust from the toxic people around us, Lord, where it's possible. But Lord, bless them anyways. Lord, as we open your word tonight and we go back to our New Testament study, um, as we came back from Job now and we're coming into our New Testament study, Lord, so many are battling cancer, strokes, migraines, heart attacks, seizures, blindness. 
and so much more, Lord. So much, so many people are suffering needlessly, Lord. But we know your will is in play. And Lord, we know your plan is at stake here, Lord. And we know you have a reason. Whether it be yes or no, God, hear our petitions tonight. Say to our hearts, Lord. Answer those that you will answer, Lord, tonight. And deliver those that you will deliver. Lord, we ask this. As we open your word tonight, Lord, bless our hearts and minds and ears and eyes and our lips to only speak that which you want us to teach. Take in what you want us to learn, O oh God. Let us not forget your goodness and how many you've answered already, O oh Lord. I want to thank you for all the answered prayers, Lord. Because you've answered so many off of this prayer list already, Lord. And you tell us all the time that your word will never return void. And once your answer is done it, or given, it's finished. Lord, we thank you for that. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise for our prayer family. That, Lord, you do hear us. And you do answer us. You are our rock. You are our strong tower. You are our fortress, O oh Lord. In times of trouble. So we praise you before the breakthroughs, O oh God. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Oh, I did miss uh, comfort. Lord, I'm coming back to you. Please stay comforting those that have lost loved ones, Lord. I forgot to ask for that tonight, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I forgot one part, and that was the comforting of the loss of loved ones. Hmm. I'm shaking, guys. Sorry. <laughs> so much to be thankful for. I, there is just so much to be thankful for, guys. And guys, remember how God restored Job last week before we get started on this tonight. Doubled Job, didn't God double Job's age? If memory serves me. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. When man was limited to 120 years, God said, no. Watch this, Job. Now you got 140 more years. Now you're fully restored. <laughs> God always restores what the devil takes. That's what I wanted to mention. So. You are promised that or there is a restoration coming. Whether it's peace, joy, home, sanity. It's all guaranteed and promised by God. One way or the other, you're going to be restored. So don't lose faith. Don't get angry at God because you might get angry and I know you're going to. It's, it's human nature. But don't let that anger become a curse or a sin. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys. I wanted to catch that real quick before we start tonight. Because this right here in 1 Peter 5 is where we actually left off. <laughs> it took me a minute to find out where we left off last week. Before we went on our Job journey. And Mac, if memory serves me, I took six weeks for Job, didn't it? Yes, sir. But that was a more powerful six weeks. That's 12 lessons, guys. 12 lessons of Job. Not something you can breeze through in one, one night, is it? Oh, no. So that's why, like Chris said, these word-by-word -word studies are very powerful. Because it leaves nothing to question. And I encourage you guys to stop me if you have a question, okay? Because we'll find out the answer together. <clears throat> so let's go over here to 1 Peter 5. And we're going to focus on 1 Peter 5 tonight. Uh, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who, al who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, 
but of a ready mind. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. A couple words here, guys, I want to ask you about. Why does he say, I exhort? Is the first question. What does that word exhort mean? What do you think it means, guys? There's no such thing as a wrong answer. Well, isn't it kind of like saying, I beg of you? That's what exactly what else. Yeah. Implore. To entreat. Yeah. Implore. I'm trying to think the right word, what the right word to say. <laughs> I understood it, but I didn't know what the word was. Yeah, there's I was still, kind yeah. of saying poor, but then I thought, well, we, let's just dumb it down as far as we can. And to that call me seems to come to head. There, yeah. Call, to dumb it down to the dumbest definition that's available, and it's not a derogatory term here, guys, but it's to call near, to implore or to instruct, to urgent yeah. counsel, to comfort. So this word has multiple meanings. And all of them are right. Just so you guys, like I said, there's no such thing as a wrong answer except the one that's not given. Until it's given wrong. Excuse me, my tongue got tied there. <laughs> but if you look at what Peter says here, whom also an elder. Elder is just somebody that is educated and wise in God's word and instructed by God to lead. And that's a lot of us Christians are considered elders to the lost. And a lot of people don't know that. It's, it's one instructed by God and is mature in God. Am I correct on that, guys? In your opinion? Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're holier than thou, does it? No. No. It just means they have been educated in God's word and in educated in the spirit, immature spirit. Let's bless you. I know somebody just sneezed. Witness of the sufferings of Christ. Peter witnessed Christ, but where did Peter witness Christ suffering? Does everybody remember where Peter remembered Christ's suffering or witnessed Christ's suffering? Crystal. She was getting loud with her squeaky machine. <laughs> her chair. <laughs> Does bad crystal. Yeah, bad crystal. <laughs> there we <where> go. <laughs> That's like nails on a chalkboard with that chair. <laughs> so I have to say something every time. I love my wife. But don't we remember that in the um, Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Peter witnessed Christ being grabbed a hold of? And Peter's the one that sliced the ear off of the guard. Remember? Right. But where right. was he when the trial was going on? Where was Peter hiding? He wasn't even in the back of the room hiding with the group. But he witnessed Christ being mobbed on. I can guarantee you Peter was there the whole time and watching every time they beat him, whipped him, made him carry his own cross down the road. And I guarantee you Peter was watching them beat him uh, as he was going down that road. But then he says something else right afterwards. So yeah, he did witness the suffering of Christ. That I don't doubt. But he denied Christ as well. But now you see he's on fire for Christ again. 
and he's wanting to teach about Christ. <clears throat> but my question is, is, why does he say also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed? What does it mean to be a partaker of the glory? My question to you guys. See, these are the questions we have to ask ourselves. What was that, Terry? I was reading it back to myself again so I could understand what. Okay. But what does it mean to be the partaker, also a partaker of the glory? What do you think that means? Well, up here they were talking about taking the sufferings of Christ, but then they're also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Mm -hmm. So they kind of got. There is a southern gospel song, and this is a hint of what he means by that. Many years I've been looking for a place to call home. But I failed here to find it, so I must travel on. I'm not searching for fine mansions on earth's sinking sands. Lord, build me a cabin in the glory. Being a, and, and I'll help you guys out with this. Partaker means to take in, to be a part of, right? Right. Right. So right. To be a partaker of the glory means to receive your promise in heaven, right? It means to receive yes. promise in heaven. So that glory is the promise of heaven that shall be revealed upon his return, right? I don't know if anybody has a different way of explaining it so they can understand it, but to me that means that promise being fulfilled in heaven where we can praise and glorify God daily without any evil around us and no more attacks. No more need, no more want, right? No more children getting molested or women getting raped. No more people being robbed for a morsel of bread. No more drug addiction. That's why I wanted to mention that and why I asked that question. Also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed means upon Christ's return. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's the first part of the partaker of being a, of glory, isn't it? Is to hear Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant. To hear those words out of Christ would mean so much to me. I, in my opinion, it would be the greatest thing to ever hear. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, wait but then he makes a commandment here. And I'm, not, I'm going to ask you, do you think this is Peter making this commandment or Jesus using Peter to make this commandment? Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof, but not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Now, we've talked about filthy lucre before, haven't we? Preaching for a paycheck? Yeah, do I need to say Joyce Meyer? Yeah. I'm an evangelist. <laughs> Did I go there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go there. <laughs> but this is exactly it. There is no motivation except for the glory of Christ and a furtherance of the gospel in my heart. There's no holding back my love for Christ. So when you hear the word, not by constraint, but willingly, there is nothing that's going to stop me from praising God's goodness or teaching about God's goodness. There's no regret, no remorse, no fear. And I see it in Chris. I see it in Terry. I see it in Nani. I've seen it. 
that neither none of you, even Max, even blasted a couple things out. That about floored me when I went. Oh, there we go. That's what's up, brother. To Mac, what he shared openly, especially in his proverb study lately that he's been sharing on Twitter. And Mac, did you see what I did to Brother Frank last night? I know Terry caught no, it. No, sir, I didn't. Well, it's been a long, it's been a long couple of days, and I know with the funeral and stuff, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't go to Arkansas today with the rest of the family. I, I just too exhausted. Too exactly. Thank you. You took the words out of my mouth. I don't blame you. But uh, Mac, I told uh, Frank when he mentioned his definition of what that meant to him, the scripture he shared. I told him, "Grand Slam through a row of Teslas and the Cyber Trucks, and through the Mercedes." <laughs> and and then I put on there those. Yeah. Study with us know exactly what I'm talking about. It's an inside joke, but it's funny. But Frank Grand slammed it last night, and that's and and that's exactly it. Willingly sharing the gospel and what it means to the, you, without any expectancy of a gain or return. That's what lucre is: money or some kind of personal return. Lucre. Right is a selfish motivation. But I am going to hold over the word <clears throat> just so that we can get the definition. I love the definition yeah. the Bible has for it. To gain in a disgracefully, sordidly manner. Deceit. Right? An attaboy. Fame. Fame. Fortune, all of it is to gain in disgracefully, sordidly manner. Selfish. Does that make sense for you guys? It does. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to bold that and underline that so you guys can think about that, okay? But look what it says right afterwards. And a lot of people miss this. And I want you guys to not miss this in this scripture. But of a ready mind. How are we to be of a ready mind? What's what's one of the qualifications to be of a ready mind? Mind is set on God and you're ready to go. Because he's leading you. To answer, right? To be of a ready mind to answer God and to answer mankind. Right? Does that make sense, Nani? Yes. Because it's exactly what you said. <laughs> That's what it's exactly. It. Being ready to give an answer. Jesus himself told you to be ready to give an answer, didn't he? To always be prepared. Yes. <laughs> But is it so that we can lord it over other people? Look at me. I'm a pastor. You're beneath me. you got to submit to me. Does that sound right? No. Look at me. Look at my no. three-piece suit and my brand new jet and Mercedes-Benz limo. That's worldly ways talking. Bingo. Yeah. That's what he's talking about right here, though. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. See, and this is why I wanted I break these down because, like you said, Chris, we understand the word better this way. But then, absolutely. But then, look what he says here before we get into verse four. Being, and samples to the flock. So as spiritual elders, we have to be what? The how to do it. Right? We got to be the leader. To be the first partakers of every lesson, right? Yeah. Yeah, and understanding it as well. Boom. There went the Porsche. 
There went the Porsche. Terry got the Porsche this time. <laughs> Missed that yeah. BMW by miles. <laughs> right through the Porsche. <laughs> well, they have to you you have to be able you can read it and, and understand it. Kinda, but then you re you really need to explain it to somebody else. Sometimes you really got to get into layman's terms. Yes, or so much they can understand of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You made the insurance agent cry, Terry, because now he's got to pay for both. Of them. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. But living what you're telling. Doesn't that sound right, guys? Yes. Yeah, you got to live it, yeah. Exa an example is not only saying it, but act, but living it. And that's biblical examples. Conversion is shown by action. True conversion is shown by action. Just remember that, guys. So that example is not only a word-by-word -word example, but an actual evidentiary example by action. I know big words, guys. I don't know how I got through it. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know how I said it without getting tongue-tied. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Who's the chief shepherd? That everybody should know. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. You shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. That's an established promise that we know to be a fact, right? Yes. And well done, my good and faithful servant. Do you think it's going to be an actual physical crown? Or do you think it's going to be Jesus patting you on the back and saying, come on in? You made it. I think a renewed mind. Yes. A perfect, you know, and the way God intended it to be. The crown will be evident, though, wouldn't it? It'd be a full transformation. Chris, you're right, 100%. <clears throat> but now we come to five. Hey, drink, Cap. Oh, I just cleared my throat. That time I wasn't choking, but I'm going to grab my bottle of water. I just opened my bottle of water. And took a big swig just because Kate, because Little Wolf told me to drink. <laughs> she called me out on it. <laughs> Likewise. So, we come to a word, likewise. And we'll talk about likewise in a minute, because that's sometimes people misinterpret the word likewise. I'm guilty of it sometimes, too. <laughs> Misinterpreting words or misunderstanding words. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. And I bolded this for a reason, guys, because I've read this just recently. <clears throat> for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that, ye, that he may exalt you in due time. Now I'm going to bolden verse 7 as well, because it's very important. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Does this mean become servants of older older Christians? As slaves without an opinion? Absolutely not. Depending on them to teach you or to teach yourself what it means to submit? I'm kind of baiting a question here, and I'm waiting for it, because I know it's coming. Uh, but why does he say here, all, yea, all of you, be subject one to another? You, you already nailed it, Chris. Thank you for that first part. But what does he mean, be subject one to another? 
It kind of goes back to us talking last week, doesn't it, Chris? It does. How about being my brother and sister's keepers, guys? Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? What do you need to check? That? Yeah, got to check each other. Yeah. Make sure we're teaching accurately and that you're learning what needs to be learned. See, a lot of people think when he says submit, that it means to be subservient blindly. Yes. And it doesn't. And that's why I asked that question a minute ago, and Chris nailed it with absolutely not. <laughs> he didn't have to add any more words. That was accurate. That's how churches allow those false prophets. Yes, because they don't submit one to another to humble yes. themselves. And that's the issue that we have with the fallen churches today because they've compromised with all manners of abominations, indirect violation of God's word. Without mentioning anything, we already know this to be true. Because I could open the web right now and show you 7,000 examples minimum of these abominable heresies being taught as truth. That's scary, isn't it? Scary. If you don't know the state of the church today by the what you see on TV and what you see in your public areas, then there's something wrong. I'm going to get off my soapbox because I could go for hours on that subject alone. But it's all because of the compromise. Filling seats just to fill seats so that the pastor gets a paycheck and a brand new jet next week. There we go. Yes, Isaac, exactly. But I'm gonna I'm gonna share something with you, Isaac. I'm gonna share something with you, brother. You are having church. Anytime you're with another brother or sister in Christ, you're having church. But I get what you're saying, physical church or these yeah. public showings claiming to be churches. These theaters. Yeah. I got what you said, brother. You're good. <laughs> you're good, brother. You're good. I hear you, Isaac, and I've struggled with, you know, the whole 501c3 that's dilemma. And maybe that's maybe more your motivation on that. And I guess a logical question would be if you've made a pact with the government, then you really didn't make a pact with God, did you? Amen. Because there's strings, there's strings attached to that. And we don't need to get into it now. This is being recorded, babe. I, I thought exactly. that might be why Isaac mentioned that. And if I could just add to that, I'm wondering, are, are you new to this, Isaac? New to this Bible study? Well, just Christianity in general. No. Um, no, I've been... you, you, you don't have to. I mean, you answered it right there. You don't have to. The reason I ask is. I wonder if in some ways, you know, in some churches where you just know they're wrong spiritually when you walk through the doors. Amen. Um, yeah, and I do have more to say. I do have more to say about that, but I'll do it after we're done here. Got you. Please do. Please do. Anyways, back on point, George. I'll get off. I just wanted to no, a good question in that ask a logical question. question here. That was a legitimate question. Um, too many times, and I'm going to say this, too many times, and before we get off the soapbox of this, organized, that's the word I was looking for, Chris, is organized, public religion, impo impostering as Christian, is so prevalent. Nani brought it up, and I'm glad she did. <laughs> And Terry, you know, and then Isaac said, that's why I don't go to church. And, and 
that's a good thing to say is because they said it. What was it? I said, I don't either. We have church together as a fellowship. Well, I consider I go to church twice a week. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. here. And because we're just so learning to our Bible study is close. What's what's our motivation? I'm gonna ask you guys this. What's the motivation of this fellowship? Learn that our Lord learning the word of God and grow each and every one and growing in him. Yes. Yes. And to, by doing that, that helps us as we go out into the world to be a better witness. Bingo. Right on. That's that's it. There went there went the whole Tesla line. <laughs> and the Mercedes line. That was all parked there. All and the to strengthen each other. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. That's church. Where two or more are gathered in my name. I am there in the midst, Jesus says, right? That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. These buildings that you got to go in there fully dressed up in a suit and tie, dance around, scream, and scream a bunch of gibberish, and wail and flail and throw your wigs up in the air. That's not church. Oh, no. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, but if you will throw in cartwheels, <laughs> that, that might... That might work for me. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> but it looks well, like I that uh I can't go to church and basketball shorts or sweats and tank top. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What was that uh Mac? I said, like I said, Johnny Paycheck sang about that that was called Outlaw's Prayer. Yep. Yeah. But this is my and that's why I don't I know it's being recorded and I don't care. That's the reason why I don't go to a big church because uh well I go in, in the church. Let, I go in, in a uh, Drake in a Drake shirt or a uh, Wrangler shirt, uh covered leave in off Wranglers and, and Justin boots yeah. and a cowboy hat and uh not necessarily the 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 church down there in my hometown, but I can go to a large church in Memphis and uh, dress like I just said, and I get shunned. Okay, but that's what, formal what, attire in Idaho. Yeah, I in Texas, you you go to any church in Texas. Holy smokes! Yeah, you're you're dressed to right. kill in our in our neck of the woods. Well, see, you are. Uh, I, I would be in a, in a small church that that I. Uh, grew up in but if i go to a certain large church in memphis that will uh remain nameless gotcha i have been shunned uh well, we, and, and to put context to that we don't we just don't dress that way here we work you know um we're hot and you wear shorts and right. i mean so i get I, it you have an idea which one i'm talking about bud oh yeah we know Hey, Mac, um, let's, oh, let's yeah. be clear what Jesus even said they were called. Synagogues of. Jesus called them synagogues of Satan, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Whited sepulchers full of dead men's bones. Yep. Jesus described them in very, very graphic terms. So that's why I won't go to them. Their assemblies, yeah. Claiming to be of God, but they have nothing of God in them. Just because they preach a pretty sermon. Even Satan preaches pretty sermons, don't he? Oh, yeah. Because he's the yeah. counterfeiter. But I get it, Isaac, and I wanted you to understand that we are with you on that 100%. Not, Absolutely. Not one of us is against you for that. No, nope. oh, you, Caleb, because we all are in the same boat. Chris, you even mentioned it, I think it was last week, where you'd been hurt because of places like that. And we come here because of that. Yeah. We're all wounded Christians. Each and every one of us that are in this fellowship are wounded Christians. 
And you mentioned that to me, Chris, and that's something that stuck with me. I wanted you to know, brother, you strengthened me with that statement. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't me. It would have been the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it came from your heart. I want you guys to know that because of what Chris said, it made a clarity in me of how to understand why so many have turned from God. Yeah. And I know it was Holy Spirit driven, Chris. Don't get me wrong. You were the vessel. But it made it easier me for me to come back here to First Peter 5 and pick up where we left off in First Peter. Got you. It really did, and it made sense tonight. Just by this right here. Because there's two things in here we got to remember. And what does he say after being subject one to another? There in verse uh, 5. Be clothed in humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Boom. How many of us forget that? That God does not want us to be pride filled. And the only way to obtain true grace is to be humble. Um, See, grace can't be applied to a pride filled heart. Grace cannot be applied to a pride filled heart. It has to be one that is subdued, humble, willing to learn. Willing to stand and accept correction when it's needed. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Otherwise, grace cannot be applied. If we're not willing to, to be correct, to accept corrective action, what are we here for? Just food for thought. Yeah. This is what he means right here. Hmm. Okay. Okay, no problem, Terry. You have a good night, sister, and we'll continue recording. Good night, Terry. Okay. Yeah, night, Terry. thank you. It wasn't supposed to rain. It's not supposed to rain till Tuesday. I put them out there and I'm gonna blow them out tomorrow morning. <laughs> It'll be here before then. <laughs> yeah, it says if you want it to rain, wash uh, your car, or put the heaters out to be blown out. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Jeez. Mm, yeah, I need, need to blow them out because they're last year's whatever's in there. <laughs> gotcha. But okay, I love you guys. Y'all right, carry on. Okay. Good night. All right. Good night. You got the gist of the message though, Terry, that you needed. So that's also good. And you'll be able to watch this tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Andrew and them are already asleep, so I'm going to drag them in myself. <laughs> All righty, sister. You go take care oh, well. of <laughs> Go take care of business, sister. Okay. All right. Be careful. All right. I love you guys. Love you. Yeah, no more tripping I will. over things. Love you, Terry. Have love a good you. week. Don't trip over nothing, sister. Oh, you too. <laughs> Oh, I won't. I'll drag them in a little at a time. I'm, learn I'm learning that I'm older. <laughs> Take your time. Don't worry. Oh. But now we come yeah, to... Yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah. Now we're <laughs> going to come to verse 8, guys. This is very powerful and very much mandatory. I'm going to say that. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You talk about confirmation, Chris, on why I seen what was happening to Dusty. Right here in this verse. Well, it ties right in with that conversation with Job. Yes. When God asked him what he'd been up to. Mm -hmm. As if he really had to ask him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. But that comes to that key word. 
right here is satan omniscient or omnipresent no how do we know this multiple references in the scriptures mm -hmm. walketh about right walking to and fro i mean there's multiple references of that right yep old and new testament he knows his time is limited so he's yep. trying to get to where he needs to go so how does he know about each and every one of us and what we've done wrong how does he catalog that what does he use Well, I'm sure there's demonic forces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if it's anything like the military, um, there's a lot of privates, not a lot of generals. And, you know, privates are pretty hard on. And you do well, you get rewarded. Yep. So if you can get a Christian to sin, because here's the thing, I, I can just see the upper echelon going, well, great. You got one of our greatest sinners to sin. Mm -hmm. They're already ours, you moron. What's the matter <laughs> you Stop wasting time. Tick tock. We got a job to do. <laughs> Amen. So they're they're focusing on us and you know the rewards to the minions are when they get us to to fail mm -hmm. yeah yes and when they can do that it's probably like walking into a brand new car sales room and you never finish the deal with the salesperson you started never nope they got to bounce you to the next person. And then there's the closer. <clears throat> there's the pitch so, the closer and the financer. And they know because they've only had 6,000 years to study us. What buttons to push, yep. how to get people to slip into despair. And you know what? I'm sure God would say it. It all started with one sin. Yeah. It all started with one. Bingo. Bingo. Just a little food for thought. I'll shut up and no, no, we no. get back on point here. No, no, you did you just said what needed to be said for that that verse. Right. I don't have to teach any more on that one because Chris just nailed it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he got it. He got exactly what needed to be said, guys. Yes. I don't have to go any further or expand that any further. Because mm. mm -mm. we all understood it clearly <laughs> with Chris's explanation. And that was I love the analogy. Yeah. So now we come to verse nine. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions that are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And Chris, you kind of nailed that verse too, without trying when you say consider Job. Yep. That's whom resists steadfast in the faith. Job had every right, in my opinion, as flesh, not justifying it. Don't think I'm justifying this. Job had every right to blame God for everything that happened to him. Yet he didn't. Mm -hmm. As flesh, he did. As a man, I would say he had every right to yell at God for that and to truly curse God, and he didn't. So when you read the words, resist steadfast in the faith, we're going to use Job as an example. Because spiritually, Job resisted every attempt to curse God when the world would have justified Job's actions for cursing God. Correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah. So this does tie into Job well. Never thought of it this way, Chris. I didn't either. And I was sitting here wondering if our deep dive into Job is going to 
help our understanding of future studies and here we are here we are yeah. amen this is confirmation of that chris <laughs> old testament new testament there Rep is continuity so i guess relevance. i've run into a few people that you know there's uh, always the naysayers uh -huh. and you know this is a it's a good tool to be able to communicate continuity. Yeah. Relevant. In between Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we've all met people that, you know, absolutely do not feel any need. There's Bibles that are printed with no Old Testament. I just want people to learn the new covenant, and, and that's the Gideon Bibles. Man, I went there. The, enri the enrichment of what we just went through in Job and seeing the New Testament through a different lens. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if it's just me being a weirdo. No, but... not. definitely not. But it makes the new covenant more impactful on our individualism, Chris. I, that I can say, because now this brings us to a new understanding and a new level of grace. Yeah, my grace, in my opinion. Because whom resists steadfast in the faith? Like I said, everybody in the flesh would justify Job cursing God because of all the hell he went through. But we know spiritually that would have been incorrect in the improper application and it would condemn us to hell if we chose to side with the world. And so that's the application and the significance of how we can connect the two together. Like you said, Chris, there's no other way to explain that. It's like, wow. Because I've read this before and I said, well, what do you mean by resisting steadfast in the faith? How can I tie that into history? How can I tie that into present day? I've asked myself this before, guys. Honestly, I said, what does he mean by whom resists steadfast in the faith? In the faith. Knowing, and then this is what got me to think about Job, Chris. Knowing that the same afflictions, nothing new. You see that word same. Nani, I know you caught this too. I guarantee you caught this. The same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. First Peter was referenced. That's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're right. It is deep. Because now we can go back to Jeremiah. Yes. We can go back to Daniel. Little kid, four, 9 to 14 years old being thrown in the lion's, lion's den. We know how vicious lions can be. Well, how about young David, 9 to 14 years old, being thrown in front of giants with just a sling and a stone? Job alone speaks volumes on these afflictions. How about the noisome pestilences that were plaguing God's people on their journey from Egypt to the promised land? Yes, they were disobedient. Some suffered the cost of it. Even Moses got punished that he'd never enter the promised land. Right? Mm -hmm. He did, yeah. So historically, if you didn't have the Old Testament, and this is why Chris's statement was so bold and so poignant and powerful. Sorry for the big words again. But so deep, I should say. Because now you have an emotional attachment. And that's the word I'm going to use is emotional attachment, which is Freudian. But unfortunately, sometimes Freudian does help. To understand the psychology of man. And anybody's taken college has had to take a psychology course. 
<laughs> Why would they ask? That's what I was going to say. We've yeah. even been taught that even in high school and junior highs now. So yeah, I've been in both. It's the terminologies that sometimes we connect with what we've yeah. been programmed. You know, bingo. If you will. Bingo. But again, I would still argue. Um, do you need Freudian counsel or do you need Christian counsel? Bingo. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. I was waiting for it. <laughs> That's exactly it. But the Christian counsel is more powerful than the Freudian counseling. And, yeah. And that's just what, and then Brother James, Operation Heal America, he he explained it this way, spiritual coach or life coach. Yeah. And that's exactly it, Chris. You nailed it right along with it, and it connects right with what Brother James was saying. Well, I would argue that since we've taken a reliance on man's approach to and I'm I'm not saying that there's not been mental illness throughout history. There clearly has been. Um, but it does seem that the way it's being addressed at this time seems to be undermining the families. Yep. Now it's morphed into the point where I uh, infiltrated the government and we have you know children being mutilated in the government going no mom dad you do not know best yes yeah. so mm -hmm. that's that's I uh, that's where it got us mm -hmm. and no sound Christian I uh, human being whether it's your aunt or your uncle or your neighbor or whoever you're getting your your counsel from if it's based in christ it's not going to lead you to destroying your body in self-hatred bingo it's going to lead it's going to lead you away from that amen and it's exactly it chris and so we see the connection spiritually don't we yeah and how we can apply historical events of suffering to our current events of affliction. You're not going to, Job's a tough one to beat. Job is the, the ultimate. And I found that out that I, I've read and I've read and I've read. And yes, I mentioned Jeremiah. I mentioned Moses. I've mentioned quite a few men of God. How about mm -hmm. Ruth and Esther? Yes their afflictions how about abraham's wife sariah yes barren for years and then she finally gets a son and god says give him to me why see these are the afflictions that people don't understand the impactfulness and the importance of that chris is even mentioning but <laughs> sarah's response to god now that I'm old and gray and and decrepit, you're going <laughs> to now give me a son, God? After I suffered so many years, how about the woman? And now we'll apply this to New Testament affliction. How about the woman with the issue of blood for 12 plus years? Yes. What did she say? Uh, and a lot of people don't remember this. They miss this. She didn't say, I'm going to plead to Jesus Christ. Uh -uh. What did she say about the hem of his garment? I can only touch the hem of his garment. If I can but touch the hem, I know I'll be healed. And that is faith. In action, right? Yes. If I could but touch. Not grab, but touch. But a lot of people miss the significance of that. And the, to me, the coolest part, too, is, I mean, she touched. How many times do we know people touch the hem of something? But Jesus knew. And Jesus knew that the Spirit of God had come out of him.
Yeah. Right. Who yeah. touched me. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. It does. It does. Yes. And where where are we at now? Amen, Mac. Well, I remember watching the clips of the Beatles as a little boy. Mm -hmm. That was misplaced faith. Worship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I've been caught I've been caught up into it. I'm still fighting it myself. I you all are. You know, um so I mean it, if you're not aware of these things, it's it's just kind of ironic that you look at how someone was so focused and knew. Mm -hmm. No, if I if I just touch him, and I looked at those old black and whites and people going crazy and waiting at the airports, and they knew their lives would be fulfilled if they just saw John Paul, Ringo. <laughs> you know, it was, um, you know, if we all put that effort into other endeavors I, you know wishful thinking philosophical yeah. thinking i'm sorry Rabbit that's hold. <laughs> because that's what we do by studying we strengthen each other and seeing the struggle so that goes back to the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world see god has never had an irrelevance to the old testament or the new testament mm -hmm. Well, I wish this was around when I was a kid. So do I. So do I, Chris. I really but do. I praise the Lord it's here now because, because, because this is cool. I mean, it really is. And we've become stronger before it. You know, again, breaking the word down word by word. How does it apply? Yeah. Yes. And, and hopefully everyone's walking away from these meetings enriched. And filled with spiritual manna. Yes. yes. Exactly. The world's tough. You know, turning the news on. Yeah. Is One instant tough. depression, turn the TV on. <clears throat> you want an instant dose of depression? Turn the TV on. You're right, Chris. This is definitely my solace. Mine too. I, they, these I look forward to because I'm not only you guys are, are learning and being enriched, I'm being enriched. I'm going to use Chris's word, enrichment, spiritually. Because that's exactly what these studies do. And that's why I said if we just get one chapter tonight, that praise God, because this one chapter is very powerful and very important post-Job study. Did I know this when I when I pulled this up tonight? No. But it but it got me. And it got my attention. And it made it more personal. Would you agree with that, guys, that it's made this more personal tonight? After yeah. About Job? Yeah, definitely. If you don't walk away from this changed, I'm sorry. But for me, I'm changed. Yes. I'm not the same as I was yesterday. I'm stronger. Hmm. But I love his next statement. I love his next statement here, guys. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by, Je by Christ Jesus, after that you had suffered a little while. Did you catch that? Mm-hmm. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Isn't that what we were just talking about, Chris? Finding solace? Yeah. Wouldn't that be putting you on the firm foundation too? That's what establish means, to place upon, to build upon, right? 
Yes. Does it mean perfect in the flesh or perfect in the spirit? Perfect in the spirit. Mm -hmm. What does settle mean? Doesn't settle mean mental mental clarity and assuredness? I mean, we can def we know that to be a fact, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what he means by make you perfect, spiritually perfect, establish mm -hmm. you, put, build you upon the rock of Christ, and upon His grace and His faith, knowing that He is the Messiah. Give us strength to not fall backwards when Satan buffets our path, right? Yes. And to settle us, to give us clarity of mind, to make us aware of Satan's attack upon us, right? That That's, we know that to be fact. That's the goal, the ultimate goal is to perfect us spiritually. But having not read Job word by word and broke it down, do you think we could ever come to that conclusion, honestly, in the same clarity? No. No. Not in the same clarity, not in the same way. It has a deeper meaning now, don't it, Nani? Yes. <clears throat> For me, personally, I wouldn't have understood this enough or grasped the gravity of it. That's the word I'm looking for, the gravity of it. Well, we all drive, and, you know, I'm sure wherever everyone's at geographically, there's that time of year where the insects come out <laughs> and your windshield. It's pretty nasty. Yeah. And so I'd liken it to, you know, prior to Job, um, yeah, I had a dirty windshield. Yeah, I'm driving down the road. You'll kind of see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then you get your windshield cleaned, and it's like, we all know the feeling of a clean windshield, and it's like. Wow, I was missing I so can, much. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I can see clearly now. And, yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's so that's What a great. I, I agree. What a great. I agree. Wow. Yes. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So Peter kind of stuck a prayer in there, didn't he? Peter snuck a prayer in here. <clears throat> so we also see this as a prayer. What a great prayer. Amen. And there's a reason why I didn't highlight that section where it says make it make you perfect, establish strength, and settle you. <clears throat> you know, think that's maybe that's why the church failed mm -hmm. as a whole. Yeah. Because instead of and it, it was right there, you know, <clears throat> we allowed as the body of Christ and his church. To have preachers motivated by money take the reins and take the helm. And mm -hmm. here we are, Lear Jets and all. Um, <laughs> yep. <sighs> how do you think Paul would have viewed something like that? Yes, yes. That's why you see Paul basically ripping his shirt. You know? Why do I got to keep repeating myself? Remember how Paul laid the sarcastic humor in SmackDown? Oh, but absolutely. We love Paul's sarcasm. Well, it goes right back into... Jesus used sarcasm. <laughs> I'm wondering if the reason all of us ended up here and maybe weren't in because trust me, I felt kind of weird about not going to church and like, I'm the weird guy. Um, and to be honest with you, with some of the questions I've asked, I've been told nicely 
That's a great question, Chris, but maybe there's another church you need to go to. <laughs> yeah, because they get better. To be thrown in their face. Mm -hmm. And that, um, people then leave me feel, feeling real built up. I don't know if anyone else has had that experience. I've been asked. But, I've been physically escorted out of a building before. Well, I had that happen as well, and I won't get into it. But no, um, my favorite one was when the Catholic Church asked for a meeting of all preachers, ministers, priests in the whole city to meet up at a um, Catholic Church for a community meeting of religious leaders. And armed security escorted me out of that meeting because I told them I wouldn't bow to the Pope or to the priest and let them be a leader in the community in that sense because I don't, man has no authority, only God has the full authority. And they literally arm escorted me out of the building. I thought that was kind of hilarious because I bowed to no, uh, none other than Jesus Christ. And they didn't like that. They didn't, they wanted to be in control of the community and all the religions of the community and face of the community. The Muslims wouldn't even attend. The Jews said, I will not step my step foot in the synagogue of Satan ever. And that was fun. And that was, should have been my clue. But right off the bat, when I first went into it, because I, I felt, and like I said, is I think it was the same thing, Chris. You wanted to do the right thing. And you were trying to do the right thing. And God had asked you to make a question to see if it was the right thing to do. Yeah, that's my opinion of that, Chris, is that God was showing us and giving us the answer that that wasn't a house of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll share this after we're off. I mean, I won't leave anyone hanging. It actually dealt with a pretty large pop star Christian star um, and led to me being escorted out of the church. Now, it wasn't with I knew it. guards or anything. <laughs> um, I've been armed, escorted out of a building, out of a, it's an, a religious place. So <laughs> it was funny. I was like, you know what? I, you don't have to pull your guns, but I'll walk out. You don't even have to grab me. I'll, you can well, have <laughs> it was a mega church in Tacoma, and oh, I know which one you're talking about. Enough there that. was. Uh, I don't care. I mean, if if it was a, it was Amy Grant, and I knew it. Was, I knew it. Pulled her in, and at the time, I played in bands in Seattle, mm -hmm. and you know, recorded and. Knew it cost a whopping, like, oh, geez, what was it? I want to say 90 cents for our band to press out a thousand CDs. Yep. And if you wanted really nice artwork and graphics and whatnot, that would cost you more, but that might impact you at about 25 a unit. So, Knowing that Amy Grant's pressing at least 10,000 a run or more, and it's just simple, easy math. I mean, and she's probably paying 50 cents, 65 cents, because um, she's going to have much more elaborate artwork and so on and so forth. $17, and I'll frame this. This would have been in the 90s. Um, seemed to be a little ludicrous, but let's test the waters. And I just went up and asked and said, if I didn't have the money, would you give me that? And it was like I had walked into Wells Fargo and asked them for all their money. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, the, they looked at me and the word abhorred comes to mind yeah. like Satan himself had just walked up to the table and mm -hmm. um, you know, with more than one Christian. So I said, well, you know, 
this is interesting. Here we are in the lobby of a church I've attended a couple years, and this story comes to mind about people profiting in the house of the Lord. Merchandisers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's when one of the assistant pastors came up and was like, well, hi, Chris, I'll buy you the CD. And I'm like, no, you won't. <laughs> and he's like, come on outside. Let's talk. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. So <laughs> let's get, let's get this guy out of here. This is bad for business and no, not a good look. Well, did they call security fast or what? <laughs> they called somebody. Uh huh. So, you know, and if you've been in one of the bigger mega churches, you know, they are pretty classy in the way they diffuse, and that's the assistant pastor's yes. jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why they know you by name, and the head pastor's <laughs> like, ah, uh, hmm. Help me out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. So we're going to be coming to something here in a second in this this closing section that I'm going to read after the prayer there we just read. <laughs> Bingo, Mac. Bingo. False prophets. And Isaac's been through it, too. I know you have, Isaac. <clears throat> I've got several Catholic stories, but. We'll, we'll talk about that after we're done. But this right here, if you look at verse 12, that's where we're going to start. And it's going to say something here in a minute, and I'm going to make you guys think when I ask you the question that I'm going to ask you after we read these next couple verses. By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, Exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you. And so doth Marcus, my son. Greet you one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with all, with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, did you catch that this is a second prayer? Right off the bat, did you guys catch that it's a second prayer? I want you guys to think about that. But he mentions this something here. As I have, as you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. Why does he say the church that is at Babylon? I thought Babylon was destroyed by this time. Why would he connect it to Babylon, though? If Babylon had already been condemned and fallen. Does anybody grasp the significance of this? Well, is this for the future church? It's not or is it, Or is it because basically Iraq was Babylon. Uh huh. And so we know that's historically been there. It's one of the even after in Revelation, yeah. ain't it? Mm-hmm. It's one of the seven churches in, uh, that's mentioned in Revelations that Maxim and Sharon about. I bet Mac didn't expect me to mention that though tonight, did you? No. No. <laughs> But a lot of people go, why do they keep mentioning Babylon if it had already been condemned and absolved? Because Iraq is ancient Babylon. But people keep forgetting that. Thank you, Chris, for answering that. Well, they've had a lot of significance here in the last decade, haven't they? Yeah. Or two decades? Yeah. Uh-huh. Babylon had had re-resurrected, hadn't it? I don't think Babylon ever truly disappeared. I no. think it's got its name changed. But it's regional. 
the Babylon region is what he's talking about here. And so that's why I wanted Chris to clarify that. And thank you, Chris. Sorry to pull you into that one, brother, but it, I knew you knew that Babylon is ancient Iraq. Is currently Iraq. But it's historically and past. It's historically past as being a dead city. Babylon itself. But the reason it mentions it, because the Bible... Well, so is, per so is Persia, you know, as far as the Medo-Persian Empire, but I can guarantee you that Iran is alive and well. Yes. Bingo! See, this is where world history plays a big factor. Regions and names may change, but spiritually, do they truly change? That's the question I'm going to ask you guys. I would think the Prince of Persia is still right there, mm -hmm. reigning over Persia. Yep. I think we're we're going to see some, and we are. Nebuchadnezzar's spirit is still over Babylon. Yeah. Yes. The spirit of Nebuchadnezzar is still alive and well in, in Babylon. People don't realize the significance of why it's still mentioned. All the way into Revelations, it's mentioned. The seven churches. How about Laodicea? Does anybody know that Laodicea itself doesn't exist, but the area does? Oh, wait, we're not supposed to know that. <laughs> we're not supposed to know the historical significance of these names. How about Haiti and Ethiopia? Do you know Ethiopia existed back then as cursed land of the fallen? But where does all these world organizations want to go and feed the children? Hmm. What are you getting at, Brother George? What are you getting at? What are you doing for this? This is just open thought for me, guys. And, and I got to ask these questions. Bless you. But a lot of people don't realize that. God bless you. Oh, thank you. But people don't understand, like Chris said, the spiritual significance of these names. Well, without seeing how things tie in, George, what benefit is it? Bingo, bingo, bingo. Right there, Chris. And right now, everyone probably from the time the became aware maybe we're seeing some fallacies within the world they lived in yeah what about china asia <laughs> what about that asian region did it exist in god's time absolutely but it had a different name didn't it yes it have japan it didn't have china it didn't have cambodia it didn't have vietnam it didn't have korea how about Russia? Did people realize that Russia was part of Asia? Yes. Oh, wait, then that means Alaska was part of Asia too, Brother George. Yes, it was. You know most Native Americans come from Asian descent? Yep. Mm hmm Oh, wait, George, you're crazy. No, I'm not. <clears throat> but if you look at the 12 tribes of Israel... And you look and tie it all together. Does Central European people and Asian people and Russian people, American people, Philippines, whatever. I, I could go, the list can go on for millions. Even East, even the Middle Eastern people are connected to a tribe of Israel. Everybody is significantly DNA and connected to the same parents or root parents. And there's a root DNA. And does anyone know who that root DNA is? Abraham. Abraham, yes. Everyone will go, well, it's Noah. No, it's not. It's Abraham. And people don't catch that. And thank you, Chris. Abraham's seed. Well, he was the father of all nations. Yes. So to me, it's just pretty easy to catch that one because the but Bible you know told me. How many me. people won't teach that, Chris? They'll say we're descendants of Noah. 
and just Noah, we have no significant lead DNA beyond Noah. Yes, we are truly descendants of Noah, but we're, we're key descendants of Abraham, like you said, and I want people to understand that tonight. Because everything is connected spiritually, whether it's pagan or Christian. Y'all started from 12 tribes. You're one of the 12 tribes. Your DNA comes from one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then it was split off and become Gentile or foreign to the 12 tribes. And that's because of what, guys? Gotta, I got to bring this back for a minute. Why do you think some of us are considered Gentiles grafted in? What do you truly realize what, what's a part of that? <clears throat> and we talked about it tonight. The fallen angels taking to themselves wives of man. Right? So you wonder where all these false religions come from. For me, I know where they come from. And they go, well, it, there's no way that the Bible ties the false religions into creation. Well, actually, it does. And a lot of people go, wait a minute. Well, when you go back to that whole story in Genesis, where it talks about the, the fallen, the sons of God, taking unto them wives of man. What does that tell you that it's all connected, even the Gentile tribes? They're still offshoots of Father Abraham. And that goes back to Sarai. <clears throat> right? Old Gray and Gray now starts having kids. <laughs> oh. But that's why you read here, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying. That this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. We know that as grafted in, we are under the true grace, right? Right. So even if we were of the Gentile nations, we're still under what? True grace, grace. by Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Doesn't that mean more personally now tonight after reading Job to understand what true grace was? Makes a lot more sense, don't it? Well, no. well when I certainly got out I, the context of Old Testament versus New was because the Jews had rejected Christ, it opened everything up in fair game <clears throat> yes. for everyone. Yeah. So it... Exactly, Chris. Keep going. There's no barriers. No. No, um, no longer a wall. You know, there's no, you have to be this bloodline. There's just zero barriers. And the only thing that you have to do is give your mind and your heart to Jesus. Accept that gift at the cross and let him do the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, Grace. I know there's a lot of different testimonies, but you know, if you've ever watched a plant grow, it starts as a seed and it doesn't become the mighty oak tree overnight. Hallelujah. And what we're doing and studying God's word is partaking 
of that bread. That manna from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And That's feeding important. ourselves spiritually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that way we can understand that why he says the church that is at Babylon. Makes sense now, don't it, Chris? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter where you're at. Like you said, it doesn't matter where you're at. It's that you accept the gift of grace. For there's, there's no exclusion. Bingo. That's why I wanted you, to mention that, because it got me thinking about that, Chris. Thank you. And then why does he say, greet you one another with a kiss of charity? And I'm going to ask that question, because this is where we're closing tonight. Is this one chapter, because I felt it was powerful enough to get back into it. Now, this one chapter would take an hour at least. <clears throat> but what do you think he means by greet ye one another with a kiss of charity? Does, does this mean a physical kiss on the lips? Or does this mean a kiss on the cheek or a hug or a handshake? Or is it just... Well, God, I wouldn't put you in a position... You know, there are some unequally yoked couples and, you know, he, he wouldn't put you in a position to get a black eye. <laughs> I know drink. I know drink. Mm. Mm. But isn't this a typology, Chris? I think we have kissed and embraced in this group this evening. It's a typology then. Yeah. And actually, we are talking about things that we don't talk to with our coworkers, yeah. some of our family members, mm -hmm. maybe in some cases our spouses. Um, not my case, but I'm just saying... You know, I, everyone has their own circumstance. Yeah. But this is a very loving group. It, yeah. Yes. And if we can't feel the embrace, then you're numb. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to doesn't say. Get, doesn't get much better than this. But it's, it's a typology, guys. Yes. And now a lot of people don't know the difference between typology and a literal. Yes. And that's wordplay for you. Sorry for that, Naughty, but I had to say it. <laughs> I had to say wordplay here. But a literal means physically going up and walking up to a dude and kissing him on the cheek and getting decked. A lot of us are like, hell no, we, you ain't doing that to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm being honest here, and I'm going to be very clear about that. I wouldn't be able to go to that church if they did that. You'd be like, what a bunch of homosexuals. I mean, just get, don't touch me. Get away from me. You perverts. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But this is a spiritual. Type yeah. Of and for the guys in the group, remember side hugs. Yep. With mm -hmm. your, with your lady, you know, we all have our own ways but yeah. I learned really early on the side hug is the most appropriate thing with a lady friend you yeah. will never make her feel uncomfortable you always make her feel endeared and like one of Respected. you just won't put her in an awkward position yeah right. side hugs the handshake or the bro hug hand on shoulder yeah Got you, brother. And a little little discretion goes yeah. a long ways. Yep. But so, yeah, we look at this as a spiritual typology. It's how we interact, how we greet one another. There's no ulterior motive. Neutrality is another word that's used. Like I said, word plays here, guys. Sorry. Mm. But we need to understand that. And what does he end this with? And I want you guys to catch that. How does Peter end this letter? What's the first word he uses to end this chapter? The 
means. One word, peace. What kind of peace is he talking about? A physical peace or a spiritual peace? Or both? And does it have a... I don't, I don't think he can have... He can have physical peace without having spiritual peace. Bingo! Bingo! What's his name on? So you have to have a spiritual peace first, right, Chris? Yeah. Because what does it say there right afterwards? Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that is spiritual peace first. You can't have physical peace without spiritual peace. And that's what he was significant, significant, uh, making, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. He was making it abundantly clear, because I can't use the word significantly the right way here. He was making it abundantly clear that it has to be a peace that comes from Christ and Christ alone. Because there's an old adage, no God. All righty, Isaac, you have a good night, brother. We will talk about this more next week. You get some rest, right. brother. Because we're all right, closing, brother, but you get you some rest, brother, okay? Right. Good night, Isaac. We love good night, Isaac. If you can hang hang till the end, I was pretty interested in hearing your experience. So. Yeah. <laughs> you okay. <laughs> We're but you can well. leave it at a cliffhanger if you want. That we can you do it before our next study, Isaac. You can tell us about your horror stories at the next study, okay, brother? I get you. <laughs> hey, have fun at the wedding. Yeah, because yeah, I so just my God next bless time, it. I'll tell you all about it. Okay, all right. God bless. We're looking all forward, right, to it, brother. Oh. But yeah, if you look at this, it's because he made it very abundantly clear that it has to be in Christ Jesus. All that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. What does the words amen mean? Does anybody know that it means it is finished? Yeah. Selah. What does Selah mean? How many of us know that Selah? I know Selah. But Selah is a pause. And a lot of people think Selah and Amen are the same thing and they're not. One is a pause or a break. One is it is finished. If you go into Psalms, you'll see Selah a lot. Oh, yeah. And it means take a breath. Give it a second. Let it sink in. So it's a pause for spiritual awakening or clarity. But amen is it is finished. Big difference, right? Big difference. I thought I'd throw that one in on you guys for a minute, just to catch you off guard. <laughs> but a lot of people think Selah and Amen are the same thing, and it's not. For lack of a better way to define it, one is a pause, one is it is done, it is complete. My prayer is complete. Because what is Psalms? Psalms are songs, and they're also prayers, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and same with Songs of Solomon, they're prayers and songs. But Songs of Solomon are love songs to a creator and to a savior. Oh, wait, you can't have that in Christianity. That means it's almost like, no. Where do you get that from? It? It's a devoted love to something. A love song to a creator. How he visioned. But he's also praying and worshiping God in the process. Mm -hmm. So it's funny how the Old Testament ties to the New. And not in a goofy, happy way. Peculiar. A peculiar way of how we are so connected to the Old Testament that we didn't even realize it until we read Job again. Job has changed all of us. And it is so connected to 1 Peter 5 that we didn't realize the connection until tonight. And I know each and every one of you can agree with me tonight that our lives aren't the same as it was yesterday or the day before. Because every day we find new reasons to hope for what's coming. 
And if anything, this has made it more personal in our hope. Let us not forget the gift and the glory God has given us. Let us not forget the commandments as Christians we are given by our Creator a set of standards that we are to live by. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Be sober, be vigilant. Resist steadfast in the faith. How many people caught all these commandments being retied in here? In this one chapter. What is the promise and the and the end result of those adhering to those standards? They make you perfect spiritually. They establish you spiritually and physically. They strengthen you to resist. They give you the clarity of the mind to see the enemy at hand, right? But had we not read Job again and truly broke Job down, would we truly grasp these tonight, these commandments and the clarity of these commandments and the promises being fulfilled in each and every one of us? Had we not took the time to truly listen and listen to God alone and truly humble ourselves? Almost forgot humility was in here. But as it says, he give he resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Is humility a, can, a commandment? Yes, it is. But so many of us forget that, right? Yes. Crystal, you're squeaking. Back. <laughs> then he comes to this, this last one. Uh, and this is the one that I was very critical just before he ends this lesson here. Greet you another with a kiss of charity. <clears throat> Showing the spiritual love amongst each other and to the world. Greeting someone in love is what this is about. That's typology. It's showing the love of Christ in action. Hey, how you doing today? Are you really okay? Do you need to talk? Hey, I got an ear for you, brother. Don't give up. Let me tell you about my day, if that will help you understand how much I truly want to hear about your day. Or let, here, tell me about your day first, and then I'll tell you about my day. So we have something to, of equal ground. But that's what it means by greeting each other with true humility and love and genuine love for each other. What is charity? What? Charity is an agape love. And, and a lot of people don't understand that charity and agape love are one and the same. And agape meaning boundless, unmeasurable, deeply spiritual. I mean, I got thousands of definitions for agape. The one I love the most is Jesus' own definition of agape love. How much do you truly love me, God? As far as the east is from the west. You can't measure it. It's immeasurable. That's the greatest definition of charity. Is agape. Immeasurable, boundless love. No boundary. Because it's a spiritual love. It's not a physical, flesh-driven love. And Jesus even said, greater love have no man than this, except that he lay his life down for his fellow man. Right? So we come to this tonight as a takeaway. That we are forever changed for God's glory. Let us give him the praise. Let us give him the glory, because the glory, because we are changed because of him, not because of us, but because of him. Because of him, we are able to see this immeasurable love 
for others. He has given us the heart of grace. Let us go ahead and close. I'm sitting here almost in tears, guys. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you in closing tonight, Lord. Forever changed. Lord, we cannot say we haven't been changed tonight. There's no doubt in my mind how personal <clears throat> you've made these lessons to me. Lord, I come to you tonight as a brother, as a child of yours, a child of the King, Lord. And I make these petitions known for my brothers and sisters. I make this prayer of gratitude and praise to you, O Lord, that you've heard our cries. You've forever changed our life from the worst to the best. Lord, yea, though the, the things in this world might not be perfect for us, Lord, but we're going to praise you anyways. We're going to honor you, Lord. We're going to give you the glory. We're going to worship you and you alone and trust you and you alone, O oh Lord. You have taken the scales from our eyes and gave us the clarity and the establishment in you that you are the foundation of us. You are the rock upon which we stand. As your children, O oh Lord, we humbly thank you for bringing new meaning to your holy word in each and every one of us. As we close tonight, Lord, put a hedge of protection around each and every one of us and our families, Lord. Let not the enemy try to steal what you have blessed us with. Let us not grow faint. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. Lord, for we know the prize is close at hand. Not for the gain of that prize, Lord, but for your glory and your kingdom. This we do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. Oh, I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes, guys. Give me a second. Mm. I'm going to stop the recording, but before I do, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that are watching this video after we've had the study, those that have attended the study. I want to praise God for each and every one of you. And Lord willing, Cricks Don't Rise, we'll see you all on Wednesday. We will have a little post-recording session just to fellowship and to close out the night. Again, I thank each and every one of you all that attend this or watch this later, that the Lord blesses and enriches you and changes your life. Again, Lord willing, cricks don't rise. I will see you guys Wednesday night and on Twitter and Discord. Again, thank you all for coming. God bless you guys. Let's go. Good night. Okay, good night, guys. Let me go ahead and stop the recording.